Camouflage, changing to hide. What is camouflage? The leaf-tailed gecko shown below is camouflaged against the tree bark underneath its body. To be camouflaged means to be hidden. Animals with camouflage have colors, patterns, or textures on their bodies that match their surroundings. The colors, patterns, and textures of this gecko's body match the tree bark almost exactly. Patterns and textures. The hawkfish in the picture above blends in with the corals that surround it. The patterns on the fish's body look like the shapes made by the corals around the fish. The grasshopper on the right is camouflaged by its color and the texture of its skin. Its color blends in with stones, and the bumps on its skin look like little bits of soil. Shapes that feel. Some animals are hidden because they mimic or imitate parts of their surroundings. This kind of camouflage is called mimicry. Animals may mimic rocks, twigs, or leaves. Animals that use mimicry are often the hardest to see. The colors and shapes of these animals disguise them perfectly. Can you see the two sticks in this picture? They look just like tree branches. The two stick insects. There are two insects here. See if you can find them. There are two. I see them. I hope you can see them too. Not what they seem. Animals have mimicry to look like things they are not. The stink bug ab above is the same color and shape as the leaf underneath it. When the bug stays still, other animals may not see it. The fly on the right looks just like a wasp that stings, even though the fly cannot sting. Animals might stay away from it because they're afraid of getting stung. So that's not really a wasp, what's on that yellow flower. It is a fly. Very interesting. Why do animals hide? Animals hide to stay alive. Some animals hide so they will not be eaten. Other animals hide so they can catch food. Animals that hunt other animals for food are called predators. The animals predators eat are called prey. Both predators and prey can be camouflaged bodies, can have camouflaged bodies. Prey are camouflaged so that predators will have trouble seeing them. This fish is camouflaged from predators. It blends in with the corals around it. Look at that. Predators hide too. Predators do not use camouflage to protect themselves. They use camouflage to hide so they can get close to their prey. The closer the, they get, the better chances they are of catching food. So if you see that green, the green insect is a prey mantis. It is a predator. It hides among green plants and waits for other insects to crawl or fly close enough to catch. This fly did not see the praying mantis and got caught. Poor guy, he's a goner. Hiding the babies too. Animal babies need camouflage too. Most babies are small and weak and they, are, they move slowly. It is easy for predators to catch them. Having camouflaged bodies helps baby animals hide from predator, predators. Green sea turtle babies are have soft shells, so they are easily eaten by many predators. The green bodies of the turtles blend in with the seaweed on which the turtles feed. Being camouflaged helps the baby turtles hide from birds and other predators. So you see the little, the all the seaweed that they are, they're they're on is the same color as their turtle shells. It helps them look invisible. Staying safe. Some animal mothers try to keep predators away from their babies. Babies still need camouflage, even if their mothers protect them. They need camouflage so that predators will not see the babies while their mothers are away hunting. Baby seals are white because they spend most of the time on snow and ice. So they're not as easily seen as their mama. Look at the difference between the color of the baby seal and the mama seal. And look at the cougars too. You see how those baby cougars, they have spots, helps them hide. And you see mama cougar, those spots are gone. 
Where do they hide? An animal's camouflage blends in with its habitat. A habitat is the animal's natural home. Forests, deserts, wetlands, and coral reefs are habitats. Each habitat is made up of different shapes and colors. Animals hide by matching parts of, of their bodies to their habitats. Most forests have green trees with brown trunks. Deserts are mainly brown. Some wetlands have dark waters with green or brown plants growing in, the, in them. Coral reefs are ocean habitats and contain many shapes and colors. The colors and patterns of this horned frog match the colors and patterns of its wetland habitat. The co collared lizard is brown like its desert habitat. The textures and shapes of the scales on its back look like the shapes of the plants that grow in the desert. Helps them camouflage or blend into their surroundings. The sea cucumber is a brightly colored animal. It blends in with its colorful coral reef habitat. Look at that cucumber. And it's not the kind you eat, but you can see how it's it's red and there's a lot of redness around it. One main color. Many animals need only one color to camouflage them. Their fur, skin, or feathers are almost the same colors as the leaves, sands, or rocks in their habitats. Many forest lizards are green or brown. Lizards, snakes, and insects often match the colors of forest plants. The caterpillar above is green, just like the leaves on which it lives and feeds. It blends in easily. The color of soil. Animals that live on the ground are often brown. This prairie dog's fur is the same color as, it, as the soil in its desert habitat. Having brown fur helps camouflage the prairie dogs. And yes, they're not actual dogs. They look more like other animals, but they're called prairie dogs. And look at their skin and look at the dirt. It's almost the same color. Camouflage. Dark and light. Some animals spend most of their time underwater or in the air. These animals need special type of camouflage to help them blend in. This type of camouflage is called counter shading. Animals with counter shading have dark backs and light bellies. Many birds and sea animals have counter shading. The back of the bird is dark. The belly of the bird is white. Many seabirds have white bellies. Having white bellies helps these birds catch fish. The fish that swim in the water below may not see the birds swooping down to grab them. How does counter shading work? A stingray has a white belly and dark back. When a predator or prey animal swims above the stingray, the animal may not see the stingray because its dark gray back blends in with the dark floor of the ocean. When a predator or prey animal swims below the stingray, the animal may not see the stingray because its white belly blends in with the bright sunlight surface of the water. So either way, if, they're in, if the animals are looking down, they see darkness and they don't know that he's there. And the animals are underneath, they see the light and they think it's just the sun shining through the water. So he has, he doubled his chances of getting some good food. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Spots and stripes. Leopard gecko. Some animals are covered with spots. Spots can blend in with small stones or with patterns on rocks. In forests, spots help camouflage animals such as the baby deer shown below. The deer spotted coat helps to hide the animal on the for forest, floor, for forest floor. The spots look just like rays of sunlight that shine through the leaves of the leaves of the trees. When the deer is lying still, its spots blend in with the sunspots and the shadows of the forest. The spots help hide the young deer from predators. Confusing predators. Some animals are covered with stripes, and animal stripes help confuse predators. Stripes hide the outline or shape of the animal's body. Predators may not, know, may not be able to tell where the animal's body begins or ends, so they may not know where to attack. Group protection. Some striped animals, such as these angelfish, stay in safe groups. Their stripes help them blend in with one another. To a predator, such as a shark or dolphin, these fish may look like one huge animal. A predator might not attack an animal that seems larger than itself. So if you see, you can't tell where, if they're all facing the same way, 
uh, facing a different way, they camouflage in big numbers. See, Bambi's right there. Where are the eyes? Some animals have stripes over their eyes. The stripes hide the eyes of their animals. A predator often kills an animal by attacking its head. If a predator cannot see the eyes of its prey, it may not attack the prey's head. Having a stripe that hides its eyes might save an animal's life. Heads or tails. Some animals, such as the butterfly fish, have spots on their tails. These spots are called eye spots because they look like large eyes. Eye spots confuse a predator. Eye spots cause a predator to attack an animal's tail instead of its head. When an animal with eye spots sees the predator coming towards its tail, it might have time to get away. So I think this appears its eyes instead of um, being right here where that stripe hits. Spots on wings. Sun moths and butterflies have eye spots on their wings. Eye spots on wings to look like eyes of large animals. When a predator sees large eyes on the moth or butterfly, it may not attack its prey. So we see there how it looks like he has four eyes. The moth has four eye spots on its wings. Look at the moth's eye spots to look quite large. When the moth sees a predator, it opens its wings. When the predator sees the moth's, moth's large eye spots, it might mistake the moth for a large animal and leave it alone. Can you see them? The shrimp in this picture above is hard to see because its body is transparent or see-through. Predators may not see transparent animals because the colors around them show through their bodies and make the animal almost disappear. Look at that. It's a very interesting shrimp. Hmm. Almost invisible. In the picture below, part of the fish's body is transparent. The fish is almost invisible against the coral around it. The frog on the right is called a glass frog. Why do you think it was given its name? What does it have in common with the shrimp over here? Look at that frog right there. Look at this frog right there. Well, this is not a completely formed frog yet. It's a tadpole. Quick changes. In the blink of an eye, some animals such as an octopus, seahorses, and cu cuttlefish are able to change the way their bodies look. These animals can change the colors and patterns of their bodies to match the colors and patterns in different parts of their habitats. This is a seahorse, this is an octopus, this is a cuttlefish, and there's the octopus. You see how it changed colors? How do they do it? Animals that change color have skin cells that contain pigments. Pigments are natural substances that give plants or animals their colors. When octopuses move from place to place, they change the amount of pigment in their cells. Changing the amount of pigment makes their skin change color, so the animals always blend in with their habitats. Not only can octopuses change color, they can also make their skin look bumpy or smooth. Look at that octopus of a thousand faces. Cool. Very, very cool. Color changing lizards. Many lizards can change color to match the colors of their surroundings. Lizards have colored cells on their skin. The colors include yellow, blue, and red. To change color, lizards make their cells larger or smaller. The skin of the green animal below can change from green to brown or show both green and brown at once. The double crested basilisk has changed color to match some of the colors of the tree it's climbing. Which of the colors match the tree? Look at that. Look at this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Showing how they feel. Chameleons are the most famous color, change, color changers of all. Chameleons change color in the same way that other lizards do, but they do not change color to hide. They change color to show other animals that they are angry or afraid. Look at that, Rapunzel's friend. Is right here on the stream. Changing coats. Many places have cold winters and mild summers. In winter, these habitats are covered with white snow or and ice. In summer, the ground is gray or brown. New season, new color. The colors of furs or feathers of some animals are different in different seasons. Twice a year, 
the animal's colors change. Animals molt or shed their fur or feathers. In winter, they have white feathers or fur, so their bodies will blend in with the snow. In summer, their fur or feathers are almost brown or gray to match the summer colors of the habitats. Top. In summer, willows, ptarmigans, willow ptarmigans have brown feathers. In winter, the feathers of the willow ptarmigans are white. So you see this, these birds right here, they're the same bird. One is in the summer, so you can tell by the green. And one is in the winter, as you can tell by the snow. Interesting. Arctic foxes have thick white fur that helps them warm, helps. Okay, Arctic foxes have thick white fur that keeps them warm during the freezing winter months in the Arctic. The white fur blends in with the winter ice and snow. In spring, the fur, the fur of Arctic foxes turns grayish brown. The young Arctic fox shown left was born in spring. Its fur matches the summer colors of the Arctic. The young fox will shed the gray fur before the winter and grow thick, a thick white coat, just like the coat of the fox above. All right, so this is a little quiz that you can give yourself. It says, how are they hiding? Different animals are camouflaged in different ways. Each of the pictures on these two pages shows the type of camouflage. Read the, the questions below and find the picture that goes with each question. The answers are on page 31. Which is it? One, which animal is being, is using the color, which animal is using one color to hide itself? Two, which animal uses mimicry to hide? Three, which animal shape blends in with the shapes of its habitat? Four, which animal changes its coat to blend in with the colors of the seasons? And five, which animal is able to change colors in seconds? Can you get this right? You have your words to know and that index at the end. Hope you enjoy learning about camouflage.